This is Julie Pearson Little Thunder. Today is September 26th, 28th, 2011. I'm interviewing Rance for the Oklahoma Native Artist Project, sponsored by Oklahoma State University's Oral History Research Program. Rance, your action-based paintings are um, have inspired a lot of imitators, but your art always continues to change and evolve. And I think you say it best when you say you paint for the old people and to keep the old ways alive. Thank you for taking time out for this interview. Thank you. Where were you born and where did you grow up? Well, I was born in between Cash and Indihoma out in the, well, farmlands. And uh, I was the only one that stayed with my grandparents. The rest of the kids went with my mother and my dad. So I was the only one that stayed with my grandparents. So I'm the only one that can speak Comanche fluently. And so I went to work in California when I got, well, I used to come see my dad when he lived in Burke Burnett, Texas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got with some buddies and we used to go bull riding. And I won a good one. Uh, I forget where this is. It's uh, west of Wichita Falls. And, uh, and everybody was proud of me because I won $40 and one belt buckle. And I don't know where <laughs> the money is or the belt buckle. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so I went back to Lawton and uh, uh, went to see my brother in California and he got me a job and I worked there for about a year and I don't know there was something in me I, I, I didn't like California that much uh, so I came back to uh, Oklahoma where the Indians were where I could learn something I didn't know what I was going to learn but I came back and uh, and, uh, well, first of all, before my grandmother had died, uh, I was trying to sketch things in the ground with a stick. And my grandmother said, if you want to draw, she said, won't you draw a piece like this? And she started making axes. So that's, that's kind of how I got started, I guess. She really kind of started you into Indian art. Yeah, and then when I went to, uh, uh, California to see my brother. I seen a Woody Crumbo there, and uh, damn, I thought, man, that's that's the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Now you hadn't seen any no. art in Lawton, or no, I hadn't seen no no yeah, kind of Indian color. art nowhere. Mm. So I came back, and uh, so I start going through uh, uh, books and uh, uh, libraries and trying to find out about Indian art. And then I ran into a guy that that became a good friend of mine, and he said, what have you been doing, and blah, blah, blah. And it was uh, T.C. Cannon. Mm -hmm. So T.C. and I started running around together, and, and he was sketching and drawing, and I said, damn, I want to do some of that. <laughs> so we both started uh, painting, uh, doing our own thing, and he became T.C., the great T.C., whom I still love, and, and, uh, and the guy that, uh, that taught us that said, don't stop and keep going, because mm -hmm. I envy you guys, was Lee Satoke. He was Kiowa. Right, and he was Monroe's brother, that Yeah, right? that's, that's Monroe's son. Monroe's son, okay. Yeah. And so we, we, uh, so what I done was I, I you know, I I didn't really stay with art that much. I, I was running around and doing this and that. And so just on a kind of when you and T C felt like it, you'd drop in and and Lee would kind of show you a few things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, T uh, C and I would go over there to his house, mm -hmm. and he'd he'd say, Hey, uh, do you guys know how how to make? Uh, 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 snow and I said, we said no you're our teacher you're supposed to show us and <laughs> so he got a toothbrush and put some paint on uh -huh. it and 
made snow and man, we and TC looked at each other like, this guy, this guy's good. <laughs> he knows way more than we do. Mm -hmm. So we just, you know, we started painting and, uh, and I ran into a guy in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. I went through three or four galleries or, well, they signed me up for like five years. Now, which, had Cannon gone to the Institute yet? Which or this, you? no. Uh, okay. Which, which this, see, I didn't know where TC was at the time. Okay. And so I was I was on my own, but when, when I was there, I thought, you know, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to see where the best galleries are, you know, and try to get into the galleries. And then I got into some good galleries and and got under contract, which I'm, I'll never do that again, because I told them I didn't want to do a five-year contract. I wanted to do a two-year contract. So they... To give them all your work, basically. For yes, two years. but there was it was a first rights to refusal they call it. Right. And so they 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 checked it out and they said, uh, uh, okay. And so when I got home, I looked at the, the contract over, and it, it was a they call it the daddy long legs of a contracts, and it had like fifteen, sixteen pages to it, and I looked at it. And I had signed a five-year contract. Wow. So that's what stopped me from, I do real good work, but I couldn't, uh, what I done was I done five for them. Mm -hmm. And that's what they really wanted, five. So I done five for them and real quick like and mm -hmm. then I done my own <laughs> but but on my own I kept that back right you know the, the real good ones that right. I thought was right. a lot better than the ones that they took right so, but you know you, you get caught in situations like that uh, I know some guys that that used to sing real good in uh, Tulsa Oklahoma and they were under contract like this, and the guy said, "Let me, let me buy, let me buy the contracts off you guys, and and you guys will be big, big time, cause they just cut a record which was really huge, and uh, what they done was he bought their contract out from under them, and he wouldn't let them sing, mm. so that's not no good. Yeah. So I don't go under contract." no more. I, right. I, I've done learned my lesson on that. Right. <laughs> I want to go back just a little bit because okay. um, you went to boarding school at, was it Post Oak? Yeah, it, Post, yeah, it was a small Post boarding Oak school. school. Did you get any kind of art classes there at all? No. Okay. And did you do any, did you spend any time in public school at all? Uh, I I went to cash school for okay. probably a year. And no I art went, classes? And I went to the eighth grade. That's about all, mm -hmm. you know. So me and my buddies, we said, hell, we ain't learning nothing here. Let's go. <laughs> no art classes, though. But it then. wasn't like then. It wasn't like now. Mm. You know, you have to go to school now. Right. But then you didn't have to. You know, you was right. a young Indian kid that you could go down the creek and play around all day long, you know, right. <laughs> and ride horses and do all, everything you want to do, you know. So that's what I done. Yeah, you mentioned, and of course, you know, you have this great feeling for horses that always shows oh, through God, in your yes. work. But you talk about, um, you know, uh, right, having horses yourself, you and your brother. Yeah. What were their, did you have them for a long time? Well, did you we, had, we had horses when we were young. Uh, my grandfather had horses, but his brother lived like half a mile across the road from us. We lived out in the country, so uh, when we felt like riding horses, we'd go over there and steal the old man's horses and did ride you, them to town and ride them all over. And did you get in trouble like for cars. that? Yeah. Did they you get like, scolded for that? <laughs> no. Okay. No, because we used to, uh, the, the horses knew where they lived. Right. <laughs> so if they threw one of us off, they'd just gone home. Right. <laughs>
<laughs> they can wait on us. <laughs> well, when you got into uh, the rodeo, then when you had you were riding bulls for a while, I guess, and you see, you know, you really get to see horses in action when you're watching. You know, not when you're on top of the bull. But yeah. I, I was wondering if you felt like that kind of impacted your artwork. Mm, not really. What really impacted my artwork was, I think maybe when I was young and we had horses, and and uh, it's like my brother, he lived on them, you know, my older brother, and now he's got two uh, two uh, hip replacements. I said, you rode too many horses. <laughs> I told you to ride bulls with me. He said, uh-uh, I, I ain't touching no bulls, boy. This is Kenny. Yeah, this yeah. is Kenneth. Yeah. So you you actually you have one sister, and you had at one point three three brothers or how many of there? There were was you? seven of us. There was there seven was, of yeah. you. Okay. Mm -hmm. One yeah. girl and the rest boys or no? There were okay. three. Uh, there were four girls and three boys. Okay. Yeah, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't run around with them too much. Right, because your your folks were actually were they living in Indianahoma or in Lawton? between there, okay. between Indianahoma and Cash. Okay. Yeah. And your dad did what for a living? He was a, a, a he was like a bus driver in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Mm hmm At the base there. Yeah, there's yeah. a base there in Lawton, Oklahoma. Yeah. So that's where he came in. So. You're growing up half white. Um, how did that impact you? Well, I, sometimes you know it's it's like the whites like me, and then and then uh, then they don't like me, and then sometimes the Indians like me, and then they don't like me. So I was kind of like in the middle there, right. stuck, you know. That's why I guess my brother is married to a, a white woman, my older brother, and my younger brother, he's still married to a white woman, but uh, I don't care for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's kind of an inside, insider-outsider dynamic that happens with artists, I think, a lot. Yeah, I, I, I like uh, Indian girls and uh, I like uh, half-breed girls. Cause they kind of, you know, they, they kind of think like I do, you know, but, but, uh, it's just the way it is. Do you think it impacted your art in any particular way? No. Okay. No. What was your early style like when you and TC were experimenting? Were you doing, what was it like? What? Like T with TC? Mm-hmm. When you were first starting out, after you saw well, the Woody Crumbo piece. Well, I was I was still doing uh, horse and riders and okay. and uh, Cowboys, trying to do huh? the backgrounds, you know, mm -hmm. differently. And I I really didn't know what TC was doing until I seen TC at a powwow in Oklahoma City, and and we didn't talk much about art. We were drinking <laughs> beer and having a good time. But he said uh, he was going to school up east somewhere at a college. He, he was a very smart individual. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's... Did he go to Dartmouth for a while? Or I think this so. Is before so they... I, I, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I think so. And uh, But I remember when he got killed, you know, and, and that really mm -hmm. hurt me because, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people like to talk. They say, well, we think the girl was driving. But, you know, I don't care who it is, if you're driving under the influence, you're, you don't know who's, mm -hmm. who was driving at the time. And, mm -hmm. and the girl didn't even get a scratch, and mm -hmm. he died, like you said, with diamond clenched teeth on the desert. Yeah. So he was, he was a smart dude. Yeah. yeah. So, 
Who were some of the artists that you admired when you when you started out? Did you know Leonard Riddles at all? Yeah, I knew Leonard Riddles personally, but uh, I didn't like his work mm -hmm. as much as I did Black Bear Boson. Yeah, I can see why. Yeah, yeah <laughs> see, you know, and that was really hard to do. Is like the mane of a horse. Yes, when they're you know, running. Yeah, when they're running, and 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 you have the thin lines. And you, you've got to learn how to do the thin lines. And if you don't start from the get-go, you'll never get it. You mm -hmm. know? And it took me a long time to find out how to do that. And when I done that, I made a lot of money. So it was on your own. You just kept working yeah. on that. Oh, yeah. Everything was on my right. own. I, I didn't have no instructors or anything. You weren't tempted to go to the... Did you, did you know about the Institute of American Indian Art? Uh, no, I really mm -hmm. didn't. I I, th I think I knew some of the guys that were gonna go mm -hmm. at one point, but it wasn't gonna do me no good, you know. Right. So I just I thought. Uh, Lisa to told me one time. He said, "If you if you paint on your own, uh, you'll make it." Mm -hmm. And uh, he was right. I. Made a lot more money than the guys that went to school. <laughs> All but TC, if he was alive. <laughs> Do you remember when you won your first award for painting? Yeah, in any Darko, Oklahoma. At the Indian Fair? Yeah, when I was first married, and that was a long, long time ago. What, what year, approximately? I, I really don't know what year it was, but uh, uh, another, another guy, he was pretty good. He was a Kiowa, and his name was Bobby Hill. Mm -hmm. And he was really good, and and I said, I, I, I mean, Bobby Hill's gonna bump heads, you know. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, my wife, I was married at the time. We went, we went there, and she, and they said that I had won the grand award, and I went, what? You mean I beat? <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. And yeah, and the and the guy congratulated me. And then one so you I, were how old about? I I really don't know. I I, I was young. Mm. You think you were twenty? Twenty five, twenty six. Twenty five, twenty six. Okay. Yeah, that's because I started painting when I was about twenty three. Yeah. That's kind of late, I think. I should have been doing that a long time ago, but. But you were apparently drawing and you were experimenting, but you weren't yeah, but trying I, to make a living. Yeah, but I was. I I didn't. I didn't use any paints, mm, so I didn't know okay. what. And they didn't have acrylic then. Mm -hmm. They just had watercolor, mm -hmm. and everybody was doing flat stuff, and and I didn't like that. And I started putting shades to everything, and you know. So I just started doing things my way, whether anybody liked it or not. And <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, because you did the Philbrook Annual too. You did that show. Yeah, and I got second. A couple I think. of times. I think I got first or second once. Uh huh. And and then this and was, was Boson there. Were some of the guys you admired? Yeah, you Black Bear Boson was there, and uh, Alan Hauser was a good friend of mine, he was there. And I forgot this guy's name from uh, f uh, from uh, North Dakota. What was his name? He was, oh, he wow. was a Dakota Indian guy and he Did was he good. Did he do uh, abstract, abstract. Ab Oscar, Oscar Howe. Oscar Howe, Howe. He yeah. was, I liked his stuff. Yeah, but uh, there were a lot of restrictions even at Philbrook on Indian art. They, I, I think I heard they wouldn't let him in for a while, and but since he was an Indian and you know, he was doing more stuff than just the ordinary. Right. They they let him in and and I think he won. Mm-hmm. In mm -hmm. his category. Mm-hmm. You know, and, but that's kind of what got me going a little bit was, uh, you know, uh, painting against other people and the other Indians. That, uh -huh. that was good. That competition. Yeah, thing. competition thing. And, uh, and, and, and getting a fat check every now and yes. then. I said, God, I didn't know I could 
you know. <laughs> and then I got a lot of friends <laughs> that would say, paint this. You ought to paint this. Oh, they would give you ideas? Yeah, they tried to give me ideas. Yeah. But I already had ideas in my head. Right. You know, once I go to sleep the next day, I knew what I wanted to paint because I dream about something. And, mm -hmm. like, so you never... A lot of artists, when they are starting out, they'll do those commissions because, of course, you know it's work that they'll pay for, but you weren't into commissions too much, no. ever. No, I've had a few people mm -hmm. that ask me, but I didn't want to stand on a letter all day and, you know, that's hard work. Oh, like on a mural or something. Yeah, yeah. a mural and yeah. this and that. Yeah. Okay. And I've had, you know, people that said, I'll give you X amount of money, mm -hmm. a lot, mm -hmm. and I turned them down. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. You know, because I've seen, I've seen, I've seen some, that was real good, but, you know, they tear them down mm -hmm. sometimes, mm -hmm. and sometimes it, it looks terrible, some of them, mm -hmm. you know, right now. Yeah. You know, I just don't like that. I like mine to stay where they're at. <laughs> <laughs> on canvas, on canvas and hanging in somebody's house. <laughs> now, let's see. I think you did some mall shows. You, you, so that so the art shows they would have prize money and there would be sales sometimes. But I know some of those mall shows, like in the late '60s, early '70s. Yeah. Do you remember some of those? Sure, I do. I, I was uh, one of my best friends was uh, Will Sampson. Mm -hmm. And him and I would go, we would go to malls and, <laughs> and paint. And could you just uh, set up, kind of anywhere uh, yeah. if you wanted to? Yeah, you could just. You know, they wouldn't yeah. charge you. A no, uh, not or. then. Yeah, yeah. You know that that right. was a different time. Right, right. Time zone. <laughs> uh, and if you just put your name and you know and say, hey, I'd like to come to the show. They say, okay, you're welcome. And you just, I just bring a blanket and I throw it over and and you could paint while you're sitting there and they they had beer uh, right there so we'd go over there sit down and drink beer. And, now were they just Indian art shows or were they a mixture of categories? No, they Any were kind just, of artist? No, it was Indian art shows. Okay. No, okay. no, 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 yeah. no whites or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, uh, what that's, did you price your pieces at, typically? Uh, I, I, hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. You know, it was about. That's 100. pretty good. That was pretty Price good back then. Yeah. And and I was selling real good, and uh, uh, what's his name? I just said, my buddy. Oscar Hound? No. Oh, Will Sampson. Will Sampson. He wasn't selling anything. He just couldn't sell anything. He's, he was always borrowing money from me. <laughs> so uh, one day, after he made it into the acting business, and, yeah. uh, it, it, he, he came home and I went to see him and he looked at me and he said, I know I owe you money, but I ain't gonna pay you, I ain't got no money. <laughs> so I just, uh, I didn't ask him. So I said, well, we're still buddies. So. So what were your what was your color what were your colors your palette like then were you, were they as bright as they got to be or were you working with more? I was colors? always like that was, from the beginning. Yeah, I I hardly mixed my paintings uh, the paints. Mm, okay. What I what I liked is just what I used, you know. Right. And sometimes I would add like some dark, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like brown to make. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, red kind of brownish, or mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. and then and then you can see where the red would come out mm -hmm. brighter, mm -hmm. and a lot of people didn't know how you you know how that was done, you know how how what kind of paint did you use, you know? To make so that? were you using acrylics at that point? Uh, no, these are still I started I started watercolor. And, okay. Yeah, most of my stuff started watercolor. But when I started with uh, acrylics, that got different because uh, they were hard to handle. Mm -hmm. They were mm -hmm. very thick. 
So if you're going to do anything with acrylics, you better know what you're doing. <laughs> but I think watercolor is, uh, if you make one mistake, you gotta, you're through. Mm -hmm. But acrylics, is, uh, it's between watercolor and oil. You can cover your mistakes up if you want. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever catch any flack from, about your use of color? You didn't catch flack from Indian artists, did you? Did patrons ever say to you, that's not Indian art or no? <laughs> no. Okay. They came straight to me and said, boy, that's great Indian <laughs> art. <laughs> I, I never caught no flack in any way. How long were you based in um, Oklahoma? Did you live, you had been in California and you stayed with your brother yeah. just for about a year. And I lived with my mother for a little while. Here in Oklahoma, yeah. back in Oklahoma. And then okay. I went to Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. And I stayed there for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then from there I came back. Oh, from there I came to Texas. And from and so I've been here ever since. How did you I, I end up here? Well, uh, there was a very rich man, a multimillionaire that liked my stuff. And he said, hey, are you ready to get out of Oklahoma? I said, are you ready to take me to Texas? And he said, you bet. I said, let's go. So we hauled all the art. He had, he had a Kerr's truck, or a, 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 excuse me, he had a Budweiser truck. <laughs> and we just kind of loaded it up and brought it, brought everything here and went all. And so was he kind of like a patron in the sense that he like bought a lot oh, of yeah. your work yeah, once you got here? He bought a lot, yeah, uh -huh. and uh, he kept me afloat for a long time. And, but once I got started here and, and quit Santa Fe, I, it's just like I get calls all the time or the internet, mm -hmm. you know, so. Did you actually live in Santa Fe for a no. year or two? No, you never did. No, I'd live just... in Boulder. Okay. Yeah, for about a year or two. I want to talk to you about that real uh, quick. That was you did good. that. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you did that spirit horse for White Horse Gallery. Uh, yeah, I, guess. I sure did. Yeah. Uh, did Did the owner commission that piece? I, no, I was with a gal, and and she was uh, a Lakota gal, mm -hmm. and she uh, she said, "You seem like you have medicine on you." And I said, well, I seem like I do too. You know, we were just kind of kidding around. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, you see that man walking that away? He's a medicine man. So I said, well, let's go see him. So I walked over there and I started talking to him. And he gave me some corn out of a little bag he had. Mm -hmm. He gave me some corn. And I told him I was going to do that corn walk from Taos to to Blue River, Blue Lake, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. back, that's like 15, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's 15 days, mm -hmm. or 15 miles. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, when I when we got there, they were already gone. So, <laughs> so we hung around there, and then we went back to Santa Fe, and uh, it just, well, you know, things just turn out the way they turn out, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I liked Santa Fe for a while. I met a guy that he could make a dollar off of his brother. <laughs> so he said, Rance, would you do this for me? Would you do that for me? I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make a, I'll cut a deal with you if you do what I say. Get us on the plaza. I said, if you get us on the plaza, I'll put my work in with you. He said, okay. So he got on the plaza and he gave me a call. He said, I'm on the plaza. <laughs> I said, God, how many paintings you got? He said, none. <laughs> I said, well, what are you gonna do? What if I, I don't have any either? He said, well, you better get to working. <laughs> so he was I, like a, gal a dealer or a gallery owner. He, well, yeah, he wanted to be in the art business. And, uh -huh. and he, 
and he heard of me a long time ago. He was a lot younger than I was. Uh -huh. So I said, all right. So I got with him, and we started making a lot of money. We, we That's when the first time I made over a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. We start making a hundred thousand dollars like every year. People were buying large pieces and he said, paint them big. I said, so you were living in Texas. At I that was point. living here, but, but I was traveling up there. Yeah, yeah. back and forth on a, on that suburban I had out there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that suburban's got 165,000 miles on it and when I bought it it had probably uh, 150. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> it, uh, that's, uh, I mean I ran the wheels off of that thing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, but. Um, so early in your career, I mean, you've talked a little bit about business lessons and one of them had to do with contracts. Um, but also, I think if I read early in your career, you decided you had a bad experience printing with a gallery that printed without your permission. Oh, two or three times. So yeah. you decided to learn the printing business for yourself. Yeah, yeah. How did you... And boy, I tell you what, I'm, I'm so glad she glazed her here. <laughs> yeah. Because I've got a friend that's here in town, I could just say, hey, I've got a couple of paintings. You want to do a couple of gigles on them? Mm -hmm. and she says yes. She does a good job. And you want to explain real quick what a gigles? Oh, that's hard. <laughs> but I... there, I've got that around, and it's a round deal. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I don't know how you work the buttons on it. It's yeah. kind of like a computer, but. But more more color per square yeah, but you put... inch, I guess. Yeah. And, and yeah. better color. Yeah, and it's. And it's a closer color than yeah, uh, like Stephen Stills is the one that done it, and he's a musician. Yeah, he's the one that come up with that first. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. The first Stephen developed, a, experimented with that process. Yes, he developed uh, and, uh, the gigle and I just fell over. With. <laughs> and I know him, and I know uh, uh -huh. Stephen Stills. I know Stephen Steele's, I know uh, all of these, a lot of the rock stars, you know. Did you meet them through your artwork? Yeah. Or, uh -huh. Yeah, a lot of them wanted me to uh, uh, do the, uh, the, you know, when they had albums, they yeah. used to want me to put album covers for yeah. them. Oh, so know? what are, who did you do album covers for? Well, I, I didn't do anybody's album cover, but uh, Santana, he, he went and, uh, he bought a piece from me and he said, I'll, I'll love it, I'll put this on my, uh, you know, one of these little cassettes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I said, eh, it's all right, you know. Cool. So that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. And so these other guys th that I ran around with, they're mm -hmm. old like me. They <laughs> they don't go out playing music. They might go out playing, but yeah. they don't go play music. Yeah. When in, um how did you end up working at Krauss Printing Company? There was two, there were, there were three of us, there were, we were buddies, and we needed money real bad. <laughs> three art, three Indian artists? No, no, one, he's still alive, but he's in the state penitentiary for life, and mm. the other guy is very sick, but you know, they wanted, uh, we wanted to, they they needed me, and so we went over there, and they said, y'all are hired. <laughs> and we looked at each other and started laughing, because we've been crazy all our lives, so. We uh, got to, uh, got to doing uh, all kinds of things they wanted us to do, and and they were paying us good. And was it a press that did mainly artists' reproductions, or uh, no? Okay. Uh, they were they they were doing art on transfers for shirts, okay. you know, and and for ball, uh, you know, uh, ball oh, shirts and oh. stuff like that, you know, and so 
I started sketching some crazy things, you know, real funny <laughs> stuff. And they said, could we, could we do that? And I said, well, sure. You know, and so they, they would run them. A hundred, hundred and fifty of them, and and I think I don't know how many I had done. Would they give you like a percentage to sell? No, or? because it was we were just having fun, you mm -hmm. know, and and it was just uh, just a little batch of us, you know, and so they said, uh, 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 would you? Uh, so they turned around and tried to. They, I said, hey. I'm going to a powwow in Gallup, New Mexico. <laughs> and I said, could I take some of them uh, iron on transfers? And she said, take as many as you want. You know, it's, you're, you're the owner of them. She said, she said, we just got the place to for people to buy them if they want. And I said, okay. So I took a whole batch of them to Gallup, New Mexico. And I, that was... You know what? That was the first thousand dollars I've ever made. <laughs> wow. I just died. Wow. We were selling them. At the ceremonial? Is that? Yeah, we, yeah. Was, we were selling them for a dollar a piece. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we got us a booth. The booth was free. So they kind of knew who I was. So they. We were selling for a dollar a piece. So we ran out of that. So I start making these uh, hair, hair bands. I don't know how I done it. I still don't know how to, but for women, and, and it's just, you know, the plumes. Uh -huh. So I went to, my wife went to town and bought a bunch of plumes in a box. <laughs> and I said, goodness, what are we gonna do? And it was, I remember the plumes were red and blue. Uh -huh. And so I just put red and blue together with a safety pin. And, <laughs> And I laid them out. Oh, we start selling them for five bucks a piece, <laughs> and they were going. Now. And we were there two days, and I made over a thousand dollars. I said, "Let's go home. <laughs> yeah. I'm tired." <laughs> you don't know approximately what year no, that was. No, that I don't. It was before you were painting. I'm a big Indian. I just <laughs> live through this world. I'm ready for the next one. <laughs> what um, what do you think has been one of your most important art awards that you've received? I don't know. I got a Spur Award up there, or and maybe. and that was uh, uh, I used to do uh, I used to do the cover for Appaloosa Journal mm -hmm, out of uh, mm -hmm. Idaho. Mm -hmm. And and they gave me a Appaloosa horse, uh, oh. and I thought that was really good. Yeah. I mean a bronze, a bronze Appaloosa horse, oh. and it's uh, and this was out on on stage mm -hmm. in Dallas, Texas, and uh, we had a good time. Were they kind of acknowledging the fact that, uh, you know, you've done paintings for the oh, Alisa yeah. mm -hmm. organization? And this, and this was a gift from uh, the Appaloosa Journal mm -hmm. to Rensu, uh, and they didn't have very many of them, and that's what I liked about it. Yeah. And uh, I, I can't think of his name, but he's the one that done the sculpture piece. He's a Western uh, actor. And uh, I remember him uh, coming out. They said he was coming out on his horse to, you know, make a round in uh -huh. Sedona, Arizona. And he fell off his horse, and they ran over there to pick him up, and he was dead. Oh my god! He had goodness. a heart attack. So. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. But it. Yeah, I think uh, I read too that the paintings that you did, which they would use as posters, were some of their best-selling posters for the Appaloosa people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We sold a lot. Yeah, we sold a lot of Appaloosa <laughs> posters. Boy, our people would get mad when I sold, when I sold out, you know. <laughs> How could you tell them to do something? Another one just like that one? And I'd go, uh, I, I don't, I 
I don't live over there in Idaho. I don't know <laughs> them people that well. Well, it's just kind of for them. It's yeah. kind of nice that you've gotten through these different horse magazines or western magazines. I mean, for me, I always like to see that it's kind of like they're acknowledging Indians are cowboys too. Indians were really the first yeah. cowboys. And it's kind of nice that you you seem to um, you know, they cover you. Yeah. They cover you in their articles and they Yeah. They were they're real nice. Yeah. And you know, they weren't like certain people I ran into, <laughs> the bad people that I'll pay you and they don't. Mm -hmm, you know, they pay mm -hmm, me. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you you gotta watch that. And and I try to teach young artists that because they don't know. Right. And I didn't know when I got into the art business, I didn't know that I was gonna come this far. Because, you know, once you start selling, you, you're selling like mad. <laughs> and uh, some people won't pay you, you know? So there was enough, uh, here two, three years ago, there was a, I was in a gallery in Santa Fe and I trusted Indians, and I trusted this Indian guy, you know, with my artwork. And and I said, hey, you owe me like seven or eight thousand dollars. When are you gonna pay me? And he said, oh, I forgot to tell you, first come, first serve. So I just went to the DA, and I told him what he said. So the DA snatched him up and brought. <laughs> Brought him and said, "If you don't pay rent, said in five days, you're going to the pen." And I got wow. my check within five days. Wow, so, <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah. And I got all of my, and I got all of my paintings out of his place <laughs> too. And I seen a couple of young Indian boys that had their artwork in there, and mm. I couldn't just walk up and tell them because. You know, a yeah. big fight would have started or something like that. So, yeah. um, what were the major changes for you, like during the '90s, in terms of your artwork and kind of the landscape of Indian art, selling Indian art during that time? See my abstract. Yeah, you did start into some more. Yeah, I started doing abstract with. With, uh, you got to understand abstracts hard, you know, it's like that teepee up there, you know, see, and the teepee is not for sale because I could have sold it a thousand <laughs> times, but I just won't, you know, there's certain things you like because it turns out right, you know, an abstract is very hard to do. Some people think it's easy, but right. it's not. Why, why is it so hard, do you think? You gotta know what you're doing, and you gotta know where to put the paint, mm -hmm. and the paint don't stay in one place, it runs. Mm -hmm. So you've got to watch what it does all the time. You have to sit with it like a, it's like, you gotta babysit it, I guess. <laughs> you know, when, when it starts to move that away, well, you gotta put something under there, a can, and then it'll start moving this way. Well, oh, that'll okay. be good. You know, you got to watch it. Okay, so you're actually tilting the, the board or the yeah, canvas to the get canvas. the effect you want. Yeah, yeah, that's the way you do it. And some of the ones I've seen you that I really like, too, they have almost as much movement as your, you know, galloping horses in a different way. I mean, the eyes traveling around. Sometimes when you put a fixed image in there and then you've got an abstract background. Yeah, that's what a lot of people say about the eyes. I, I've had more people say, say, I like the eyes of your horses, but I don't concentrate on the eyes. Mm -hmm. I, I concentrate on the whole shebang, but I, mm -hmm. I want the background to look good too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? So if you're if you want to, you can start showing some of that. <laughs> Those people are going to forget what I'm talking about. Um, in 1990, the Indian Arts and Crafts Act was passed, requiring artists to provide proof of tribal enrollment or a letter of certification from their tribe. And I was wondering if you remember how that kind of impacted the Indian art scene and galleries, artists. Oh. Uh... 
senator, what is his name, from Colorado. Oh, uh, Ben Nighthorse. Yeah, Campbell. Ben Nighthorse mm -hmm. is the one that done that. And I thanked him for it, and I think he done a darn good job mm -hmm. because there was a lot of people, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of white people that was doing Indian art. and But there's still a lot of white people doing Indian art, but saying that mm -hmm. they're, uh, you know, that they're white. Because mm -hmm. they don't want to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. They just say, well, this is my own work, and, you know, I can paint anything I want to paint. Right. But I know uh, R.C. didn't like that. Gorman, mm -hmm. he didn't like that at all. I used to talk to him about that, and he said, they should cut all their heads off. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was pretty good. How about your, um, that kind of reminds me, R.C., gave Gina Gray some tips on her signature. How did you end up formulating your signature? How did you come up you with it? You know what? I don't remember because I was young mm -hmm. and uh, and I, you know, I, you know, I wanted something odd that would catch somebody's eye or whatever, you know, and so I started making a, a peace sign and out of the, out of the smoke I put my name in there. And that's a lot to do. That's why a lot of these things are not signed. Because <laughs> I'm lazy. I don't like to work anymore. But uh, that's how a lot of uh, artists, uh, well, buyers, you know, that, you know, find find my stuff. They said is through the that pipe. Uh huh. And uh, before my one of my younger brothers died, Larry, he was painting. Mm. And yeah. he said, hell with him. So he done about 10 or 15 paintings real quick and he put my name on it, <laughs> put my name on there, <laughs> like I do. And he went to uh, the Southwest selling them, said, yeah, Rents told me to sell these, but they were terrible. <laughs> but they were his. And I got mad. I said, I'm going to beat him up when he gets back. <laughs> and uh, some of the guys that I was with said, don't, don't, don't do that. Said, uh, mm. whoever's stupid enough to buy paintings that look like that, that are, mm. you know, you'll catch up with them down the line. He didn't ever really ask you for any um, help or tips. Larry didn't. A little bit. Uh huh. Yeah, a little bit. But he was kind of. I told him. I said, uh, "Do your own thing." Mm -hmm. You know. But he. But you know, he was doing a lot of my uh, trying to copy me, and I said, "Do your own thing." Mm -hmm. You know, you could copy me, but move away. You know, just kind of move away from me. You know. Right. And he said, "Okay." And, uh, and then he got lupus and died. Mm. Lupus of the bone. I guess that's pretty bad. Mm. Um, you had a book come out in 2000, and um, you're listed as a co-author, and a lot of the content is you writing or speaking about your work. And mm -hmm. I was wondering, did you then from the very beginning kind of know what you wanted the book to look like and and where you yeah. wanted to have control over the material and things. Yeah, I had control and everything. Uh, way before that, I had like 10 years before that, I had the same fella, uh, Professor John Rohner. He wanted to do a book on me he, and he just kept wanting to do a book on me. And I didn't, I didn't really care for it because I was still, I was still painting and making a lot of money. And I didn't want them buying the book instead of one of my paintings. So you know, you got to think like right, that. You know, right. You're, you're in. You know, you, you want your work to move instead of a a poster. You know, a poster's like fifty bucks, and you want to make two hundred fifty or three hundred dollars. So. Uh, so that so that's what what we done. I I I 
it, it was just, it was, it was rough. Getting people to send in pictures of the, all the work, because there's a big body of work. That's oh, the saying. big, the, the book was like, ah, I wouldn't go through that again. Really? It's hard, you mm -hmm. know. It was a couple years but, process? Uh, yeah, a mm. couple of years. And then, and then you're limited. Mm. You know, you got, you got better, you know, you get phone calls, you better hurry up, you know, and I'm, and I'm flying and <laughs> I didn't like that at all. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you got to hurry and everything's, uh, slow down and hurry up, you know. <laughs> well, one of the things I, I really like about the book is that, you know, after talking about a painting, you'll put in parentheses whether your inspiration was like from a dream or from experience. All right. That's, I put that in there. Yes. And because. I thought that, so that was your idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's important for you to convey it was, that. It was important for me to do that because of, of the dreams I was having. You know, you dream of something and, and you know, like a galloping horse and mm -hmm. two, three of them behind him. And so, I, you know, that I, I thought of that and then I came in here and started sketching it out, what I seen and what I didn't forget, you know, and it, and it turned out better than the dream. Some of them, you know, and some of them don't. It's, that's just the way it is, you know. So nowadays you use both acrylics and watercolor? No, just acrylic. Just acrylics. Mm -hmm. If people ask for watercolor, I'll do watercolor, but you don't want to do watercolor on canvas. And I'm so used to canvases, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's better and it's going to last longer. I don't really know how long uh, acrylic's going to last, but I'm pretty sure acrylic's going to last longer than oil for some reason. That's interesting, you yeah. Know, I, I just think it is. Are we about through? <laughs> Your skies are always really dramatic, and th it, they look to me like they've got lots of layers. I mean, I guess sections of your sky have layers of color. Yeah, some of them are just flat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's what you know. You could make it look if you roll your brush over them to make clouds and things you can make a lot of clouds you can do anything but once you got to learn it you, you know yes. once you learn it you've got her made but that takes time a lot of it's like playing guitar i play guitar but it takes me a long time to get what i want out of it you know I really like your winter paintings, and you know, um, everybody does. <laughs> there's that struggle, you know. There's the struggle to survive in there, but there's also really a powerful spiritual um, element to winter. And I wondered if you could talk about that. I think I think a long time ago, the Plains Indians went through a lot harder, way harder times than we did in teepees, you know, and they didn't have really really the medicine that we have nowadays and i think they had a hard time like a lot of kids died of influenza then and uh, you know we had so many uh, you know indian doctors that you know they just couldn't take care of everybody and and you know the, some of the camps were large so we just had a rough time during the winter time. Uh, yeah, see that piece right there. I like I like that piece there, and, and I don't know what it is about teepees, but I can paint teepees like that, and they move faster than anything else. Mm -hmm. But they gotta be snow. <laughs> <laughs> but they have to come with snow. <laughs> yeah, they gotta come with snow. If you know what, if I if I Put all of this in, in, in a real nice, nice position. I wouldn't sell anything. <laughs> I know I had a buddy that lived over, you know, across the river, and he had, 
He had all of his uh, paintings in line. Um, the paints. Uh huh. He had them all in line, all of them, and, and he had a stack. His stack of uh, canvases was right here, and I went. <laughs> I said, "Do you, do you sell any of these?" He said, "No, not yet." <laughs> That's why he was I so said, organized. Hey, man. <laughs> You go in my studio and look around. <laughs> You'll catch on real quick. You well, got to remember where they're at. This is this this painting here is the one I call the Four Prayers because uh, I put the uh, the the peyote in there that with the built up uh, acrylic, and they look like and they feel like peyote. You know, the hard, dried up mm -hmm. ones. And that's the prayer. And this little line here is your lifeline. Mm. And the peyote men in, in the teepee, if you pass that, the chief and you go down here and it stops somewhere, uh, uh, the, the guy who's looking at it, knows when he's gonna die. Mm. So this side I done abstract like Jackson Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's all the things that's in your mind and where you have been mm -hmm. and things like that. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's one of my favorite pieces. It's really wonderful. And yeah, Thank and you. I love that built up quality. Well, it's a, what did I say it was? A, 60 by 70. It's right? a 60 by 70. That's, that's pretty large. Yeah. A vertical. And, Very big. And, of course, I didn't sign it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I put everything on it. It took me up. It took me probably two months to do. Then I put the hand in it. Oh, and yeah. I put all of this little stuff, if you could, you can't see it real good with the deal you got, but that's horse The hair. kind of highlights on yeah. the horse hair. Yeah. yeah. And I've done the shield, which I'm still working on on it. That's why I, I, I come in and I look at it a mm, lot. Mm. And sometimes, well, I was just telling her earlier, I saw one for fifty thousand dollars that will sit here for about two years, and I wasn't finished with it yet. And he bought it for fifty <laughs> grand. So, so don't ever finish a painting, or you won't. You, you won't, won't sell, sell it. it. <laughs> I want to get a little bit more, better look at the uh, the background too. Okay. The day. background changes mm -hmm. sometimes in different in different lighting. It changes to dark, to light, green, turquoise, and it's got the uh, bells and, uh, and the beaded uh, uh, deal on the horse neck. Right. Martingale, they call that. Right. And it's just really nice. So that's, that's one of my better pieces. You have all the gravel and everything that looks like gravel. And the horse, which is black but looking blue, and and I kind of done him as a Comanche, but you can see all the uh, the eagle feathers he's holding and the uh, the lance, which is the prayers that he has in his heart. And on the on the horse, he's got a. He's got a skull of a buffalo, which we were raised on a long time ago, and and certain markings on the uh, face and everything. So that's about it. All right, just really a wonderful piece too. Well, um, thank you so much for your time today, Rance. Thank you. <laughs>